and and everything that you do there's this subtext um you are communicating even when you think you're not a com you're not communicating everything that you do the permeal you know if every your your true personality permeates everything that you do so especially and it's got a lot of jewish guys that i've had they are the worst not worse no indian dudes maybe worse than than Jewish You're saying guys. as far as dating, lack of dating skills? Well, because the culturally, culturally. It's the anxiety and the pressure. The, That's where the, it comes for both of them. It's from their moms. Right. The mom and it's this expectation. And then there's also this thing about you don't have to worry about social. Go to school, get your education, yeah. get your degrees, make your money. And what's interesting is that like the same way that you learn how to study and learn to be productive and learn how to handle money or learn how to handle business or engineering or whatever, you, you still need your 10,000 hours socially. So if you don't have absolutely, that, especially today, way more than before, because yeah. like in the past. So I, I, I coach men all over the world who are not, not just Jewish guys. That's what I started with in the beginning. Right, but, right, right. Um, right. Yeah, I understood but, that. But I was just saying, I, yeah, that's but a for, very for, difficult. Yeah. But for those, for those cultures specifically, like it's sort of outdated because society's grown up differently. Like in the past, it was, right. okay, grow up, be a doctor, and then you're successful. You'll get the women. It's fine. Right. It doesn't right. work like that anymore. No, no. Your, your social proof and the way that you interact and integrate with other people is actually what elevates you to that other level. You can be a great doctor, but you can be the greatest doctor if your social skills are on point. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, here's what, I, what give me an idea of like what what on a fundamental level how you would start like how do you start from the beginning like if you get a guy who's really well, i figure not... out what's going on with them and i figure out what their struggles are so some guys come to me and they have an issue with one woman that they've been hung up on for three years some guys come to me and they have an issue with all women in the sense that they put themselves up out there as much as possible uh but they don't get any reactions or responses from women so they mm -hmm. cast a wide net they have very little confidence in themselves, very uh, a very small view of their own self-worth, and they yeah. get nothing back, which is obvious that they would get nothing back. So it, it's different for every single guy, but there's there's like a few different prototypes of the guys that come to me. But what are the, of, what are the, yeah. Give me an idea of the prototypes that you like, you know. Yeah, cause... it's the guy who's super successful, who can speak in front of a, of a room of 500 people, but can't go up to a, a woman and approach her and ask her for her phone number. It's another right. guy who is Mr. IT, who's very technical and logical, who has difficulty talking to women because as soon as he goes up and talks to her, his brain turns to mush and he can't think of a single thing to say. Mm -hmm. It's the guy who doesn't have any experience with women and who is 36 years old and is kind of frightened of women because he's yeah. he's ultimately afraid of rejection. It's right. the guy that constantly gets thrown into the to the friend zone because he doesn't know that it's okay to put your sexuality out there. So right. again, those those are the guys that I work with. And so each of them come with me with different issues or different things that they want to work on. And then I send them on on different paths right. based on what their needs are. What do you find is the the most common mistake that guys make? They do not go uh, after what they want. They do not ask for what they want. They try to cover it up and hide it. Um, or they're not clear on what they want. So they'll take anything that they can get. Hmm. They settle. settle. They settle. Because, yes. Or they well, settle for being lonely because they're doing it all wrong. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, or they settle for a bitchy is, woman. It's interesting because they'll they'll also um, they don't think they're worthy of what to, they, they don't think they're worth they're worthy of what they're asking for. Yeah, because their so, evidence mean, is that women reject them. So, okay, I'm going to take any woman I can get, woman I can get. She can treat me horribly and disrespect me on a constant basis. And yeah. It's fine because I'm not going to get anything else. And also, as as he as he lets this woman treat her disrespectfully, she loses the track for him. Every totally. time he allows that to happen, totally. He he finds she finds him a little less attractive each time. Yeah. And so it's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting cyclical dynamic that happens where you just you really it's almost like they're working against themselves. Um, the the other thing that I think is really interesting is, um, you know, how do you teach confidence? Do you know what I mean? Because ultimately, yeah. that's what you got to do. Yeah. Well, you teach confidence by first helping people figure out who they are. And I know that's so unsexy and it's not like, oh, like this is the magic pill to getting me a attraction from women. But as you just said before, when you were describing yourself, like mm -hmm. 
first of all, you were a stripper, so you're already super confident with your body. And then you started to like, look at women, acknowledge women, listen to women, figure out women. You had the experience there. But during that time, I'm guessing you were also figuring yourself out. Who am I? Who can I be to these women? How can I communicate with them so that they respond to me? Well, so you know what's mo- you know what's interesting even about that? Guys who I know who were strippers, right? There was a there's there's all people always think that there's this caveat that it kind of works out that way. And it really doesn't because what oh, happens is the strippers will they have access to so many women. And because they have access, there's a confidence that comes with the fact of having options, right? The minute they stop stripping, there is no options. And then they are the worst because they don't don't know what to do without that platform. So I help people build up their own platform. So like, again, very unsexy. But first, you figure out who you are, what your values are, what you want, what you'll allow, what your boundaries are with women, what the rules are to be with you. Mm -hmm. And then you figure out what kind of women you want in your life. You figure out who you want to be surrounded by, how you want to feel when you're around those women. Knowing those things instantly, it takes a, a while to get those things to mean something to you. Yeah, but right yeah. away, they, they provide confidence for you. Because again, you're not casting that wide net. You're saying, no, I'm not going to allow a woman to talk to me like that. So therefore, mm-hmm. I'm not going to date you. That's That builds confidence up over time. You man school 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.